So hello, my name is Darren Mylott, uh, and I'm an interventional cardiologist in Galway in Ireland. Um, and I'm joined today by my good friends, do uh, Dr. Vincent Rofink from the Netherlands and Professor Dirk Frank from Germany. Thanks for joining me, guys. Um, we've got a few minutes to discuss the cusp overlap technique. Uh, I think this is an important uh, addition to the armamentarium uh, of, uh, of TAVI development uh, and how we're going to uh, continue to, uh, to eke out uh, uh, improvements uh, in our technique to, uh, to give our patients better outcomes. Maybe what I might do guys, uh, if it's okay with you, is, is briefly describe the cusp overlap technique and how it, and how it came to, uh, to, to be. Um, when we started doing TAVI, particularly with self-expanding valves uh, uh, back in uh, 2009, 2010, um, we did notice that even if we had uh, the annulus in plane, that is to say the three cusps lined up, um, and therefore giving us a good marker for implanting the valve at a depth of three to five millimeters at that point. Um, we found that um, as we uh, started to open the device, we had a lot of parallax. Um, and so we would then move the C arm uh, in the cat lab to try and get rid of that parallax. Um, uh, and ultimately lots of different techniques arose uh, to try and implant self-expanding valves in particular. Um, later, we understood um, uh, that we can get the uh, aortic annulus in plane in many different uh, cat lab views, be that uh, an LAO view, be it uh, an LAO cranial view, an RAO caudal view. And it turned out that when we went RAO caudal, that not only did we have the anatomy in plane, but we also had um, the delivery catheter in plane. And when two structures are in plane, then of course the relationship between them uh, is, is good and you can trust it. We then noticed that, that uh, operators who implanted in RAO caudal uh, tended to have lower pacemaker rates than those who implanted in, in the traditional three cut view in LAO cranial. And so uh, an iteration of this RAO caudal view uh, was developed known as the cusp overlap view. And what this view simply does is overlap the, uh, the right and left cusps uh, uh, of the aortic valve, isolating uh, the non-coronary cusp. And this tends to occur in about 90% of people uh, in an RAO caudal view. And when we implant in this view, there's usually no parallax in the anatomy, no parallax in the delivery catheter as we start to deploy. And it turns out that this view reduces LVOT shortening, uh, foreshortening, and therefore gives us a really accurate implant depth so that if we want to implant at three millimeters, that we can safely do so in this particular view. Um, it has been a little bit of a, uh, of a journey bringing this to clinical practice, um, but it is encouraging to see a lot of people adopting this view. Uh, and Dirk, I might start with you. Can, can you tell us from your practice, what, what are the advantages of this technique that you've seen? Darren, thank you very much. Um, so as you already mentioned, um, um, the implantation, especially of self-expanding valves, um, depended um, basically on something like a personal style. So there are several personal styles, as you mentioned, and there were several very variable ways to, to implant um, a self-expandable self valve flame, like the, the Evolute frames. But um, the big advantage now with having the cusp overlap technique that, as you said, that there are almost 90% of, of, of all people having in the RAO caudal position a very reproducible view. And uh, the very positive things, what, what I feel also as a proctor is that you have a very standardized way now to approach the implantation. You have a very accurate view on the implantation depth. And when I look back, for instance, a couple of years, we were trying in different views to get, I would say, just as shallow as possible. Also, with, of course, a certain risk of a pop out, but the new view of cusp overlap technique now allows us a very accurate view, and a, I would almost say a true view of the implantation depth. depth. 
So it offers a high degree of safety to prevent us from having complications like a pop-out or a deep implant. And we can, can, can clearly assess uh, the implantation depth and reduce the interaction with the conduction system. That's clearly the, the major advantage is, is reducing pacemaker rates. And, and we, we've seen that across the board that, you know, we used to have pacemaker rates in the, the high teens, and they've very often been reduced to single digits now. Vincent, what's your experience with the technique and, and what, what advantages have you found from, from adopting this technique? Uh, well, thank you, uh, Darren. Uh, well, of course, the pacemaker rate, the reduction in pacemaker rate is uh, very nice, uh, but I think it's not the main objective uh, for this new technique uh, to, to uh, get this done, but it's also the more uh, reliability of the implantation method. Uh, you have uh, in the normal method with the three cusps, in line well for as also frank mentioned um you first advance the valve system through the the native valve and then pulling it back a little bit further and all that gives a lot of tension on the complete system which makes it a little bit unreliable how the valve will behave when you deploy it and now with this new technique you start uh, just above the uh, valve with deployment. And then it, you have to trust the system, you have to trust and it's a mind change in the implantation method that it will descend, that it will work its way down. And with that, you get a very reliable, reproducible valve implantation. And that is the big advantage. With all that, if you, uh, with the more reliable implantation, also a more accurate position of the valve, which hopefully will lead to less pacemaker rate. But I don't have those data yet. We'll see, we'll think that the higher accurate implantation will lead to less pacemaker. But I think the primary main advantage is a more reliable, reproducible implantation method. Thanks, Vincent. There are a couple of other advantages that I like as well. Actually, it, it's it's uh, it's a great view for uh, for understanding commissure and alignment. Um, I like the fact that in the cusp overlap view, um, uh, as I mentioned, which is usually a, a, an REO caudal, um, that this uh, actually reflects the short axis of of the uh, of the aortic annulus. And so, for example, if you have frame mal expansion in, in very he heavily calcified anatomy. You get to see this very early on during the procedure, whereas when you're in the traditional uh, three cuts view, uh, you're in the long axis and, and you tend not to appreciate this. Um, uh, Dirk, there are, there are um, uh, in addition to the, uh, the, the use of this view, um, that the entire optimized uh, pro implant procedure really seems to be coming to the fore, which is not just um, uh, the, the cusp overlap view, but, but more a, a strategy uh, to try and um, uh, have a single way of implanting uh, the Evolute valve. Can you tell us a little bit about that optimized pro technique? So, so first of all, I think um, having now a very standardized implantation technique, um, which is also uh, very straightforward to teach, is already one big step forward. But when looking at um, the whole optimized pro approach, it's not just the implantation, but it's basically a whole pathway. And this pathway of this, this patient pathway, which involves a, a proper streamlined planning pre-procedurally, then of course, the optimized implantation technique on the other hand, but of course also a, a very focused post-procedural um, patient pathway. Um, this optimized pro pathway is currently being evaluated in a, a very important um, clinical registry. It's the optimized pro clinical trial, which involves 600 patients, which um, prospectively addresses the whole pathway. There are, of course, already some clinical data available on, on especially conduction problems from a, a few centers, but this trial, which will be conducted in, 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 in more than 50 sites in the US and, and in, in Europe together, this trial will um, deliver the respective data, not only on the periprocedural success of this technique, but also on the whole pathway, which involves, for instance, ideally the avoidance of general anesthesia, the avoidance of urinary catheter. So it's more streamlined 
and uh, we are trying to, to remobilize the patients rather early after four to six hours, just in order to allow a, a timely discharge, also addressing the safety in terms of conduction problems. So that there is a very streamlined way to address potential conduction problems. And here again, uh, the optimized implantation technique is, of, technique is, of course, the big advantage because it avoids higher numbers of, of conduction problems. That's a great overview of the study. Thanks for that, Dirk. Um, and, and maybe to mention the, the actual implant technique, which is, which is a little bit of a, an iteration from what we've been doing previously. The idea is that we bring the marker band from the Evolute down to the, uh, to the pigtail, uh, of course, that's after uh, inserting the device at the three o'clock position to ensure commissural alignment. We then start to slowly deploy the valve up until the third node, ensuring that we're at a depth of no more than three millimeters, and then turning on the rapid pacing um, uh, until we get to the point of no recapture. And that rapid pacing tends to keep the valve very still so it doesn't sink down during the deployment. At that point of no recapture, we then roll LAO um, to make sure, first of all, that we're under the left cusp and also to assess the amount, of, um, uh, the amount of tension in the delivery system. Have we pulled it onto the, onto the inner curvature of the aorta? Is it sitting in the middle or, or indeed on the outer curve? And then a very slow deployment, having pulled back the wire to ensure that there's no tension in the delivery catheter um, and ensuring that we get that the valve ends up exactly where we wanted it to, to be. Um, so I, I personally uh, have, have enjoyed the development of this. We're learning it in Galway, and, and we've had some very nice results thus far. Um, Vincent, can I ask you, um, it's not always easy to get a, 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 a cusp uh, overlap view. Uh, have you had some experiences with bumps on the road of, of this journey? Can you tell us about those? During a good implantation for the cusp overlay, you need a aureal caudal view, as mentioned before. But in, especially in obese patients, a good aureal caudal view can cause some limitations in your fluoroscopy uh, visibility. So uh, that could be challenging to seek a less aureal caudal uh, reproducible uh, X ray tube uh, position uh, to get a better view. Um, and another one can be if you need an other access than the femoral access, say for instance, uh, uh, subclavial uh, access or direct aortic access, then the extreme areo caudal uh, X-ray tube position can also can be a limitation for your surgeon that it's in the way for your surgeon. Yeah, so not always feasible, but it's usually usually a, a reasonable areo caudal. Um, will we'll give you what you need in those very obese patients where it can be challenging. Yeah. So overall, I think I could summarize for, for, for the last few moments um, and, and say that we've all adapted the cusp overlap view, that we believe that this view um, uh, gives us a, a very accurate um, understanding of the anatomy as it pertains to the depth of implant that achieving the uh, uh, ideal implant depth of three millimeters is feasible in the vast majority of patients using this view with a much more reliable, consistent procedure that we can reproduce, that we can teach to our fellows. We're no longer trying to get really, really high to avoid pacemakers. We don't need to do that because we can really pinpoint where three millimeters is and therefore the risk of pop-out is reduced that there are other advantages to this technique outside of teaching and pacemakers. Uh, and those advantages uh, can include um, uh, more streamlined discharge uh, at home for the patients uh, and, uh, and understanding really uh, of the anatomy to ensure that a slow release can be uh, achieved uh, to, to leave us with a great result for the patient. Um, We've all adopted the cusp overlap technique. We, we, we um, believe that it's feasible, uh, that it's safe, uh, and that we would encourage um, uh, other Evolute implanters to adopt this approach. And we think this gives you the best uh, option for, uh, for getting a great result for your patient. So Vincent and, and Dirk, thanks for joining me for this PCR London Valve 2021 session. Uh, and look forward to seeing you uh, in person in London. Thank you. Thank you.